Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Classics Spirit of Hordak. Mattel surprised everyone with this new chase figure. He randomly popped up for sale on MattyCollector.com and only lasted for a short while before disappearing again. Mattel claims that this figure will randomly show up for sale throughout the rest of the year. Their hope is to recreate the hunt for chase figures that collectors used to have to perform when looking for these figures in retail stores. Now Mattel's method for releasing this figure is, of course, quite debatable. So let's just go ahead and focus on the figure itself. It comes in the same style packaging that we've seen all of the other Masters of the Universe Classics figures come in, complete with the Horde logo on the front. The back shows off a selection of other Classics figures, and even gives us a brand new bio for the Spirit of Hordak. Spirit of Hordak represents the way Hordak appeared in the recent mini-comics. This is how he appeared when projecting his image from Despondos to communicate with Keldor. As you can see, the figure is the exact same figure as the first release of Hordak, but this time he is completely cast in a translucent red plastic. There are a few areas of painted detail, however, seen in the Horde emblem on his chest armor, the red Horde armband, and the red of his eyes. Those few painted details look really nice on the figure and add a little bit of an extra pop. Alright guys, so quickly we'll take a closer look at the Spirit of Hordak figure. Now, everything about this figure, identical to the original release of Hordak. So there's really no differences as far as the articulation and all that stuff goes. So if you've got that figure, you know what to expect there. Uh, you can rotate the head left and right, moving up and down. Of course, he does have the cowl that is connected to the cape. Uh, it is going to hinder the movement a little bit, but not too much. And you can see that the cape is nice and soft and flexible. Uh, the arms are able to move outwards, forwards, backwards, swivels at the biceps, swivel a uh, regular joint at the elbow, swivel at the wrist. You can still do the torso crunch even though he's got the armor on. Swivel at the waist. He does have the softer loincloth, so legs can move outwards, forwards, and backwards. Swivel at that thigh. Standard joint at the knee, swivel at the boot, and then he does have the older ankles, and yeah, they are pretty loose on this figure, as you can see. Uh, in fact, a lot of the joints do feel a little looser on this guy, not overly so, but one of the things that I, I feel is the reason for that is because this translucent plastic on this particular figure does feel a little softer than the standard plastic we've seen on some of the other figures. Um, I say that specifically because the arms feel a little softer, uh, the wrists and the hands specifically do feel uh, a lot easier to kind of move. You can see they're a little more flexible than normal. Uh, now I do think this is a good thing. It's not as brittle as figures like Roboto or even Green Goddess, so we probably won't have to worry about any breakage issues with this guy. That's probably why they went with the softer plastic. And it's not like it's real gummy or real soft or anything like that, but it is noticeable, uh, specifically when you put like his crossbow in his hands. It's got a real, real loose grip on there and it just feels kind of soft. And uh, you can see, I mean, it's just not really even a great strong hold on there. Um, so just something to kind of be warned about. It, is, it does feel like a bit of a softer plastic, not overly soft, definitely softer than normal. Unlike the original Hordak, this one only includes one accessory. He's missing the Horde staff and the little imp creature this time around, but the one accessory he does include is actually going to be a big incentive for most fans to want to pick this figure up. He includes the Hordak crossbow, painted in white. The reason this is significant is that the vintage Hordak figure had a white crossbow, and ever since the Classics version included a black crossbow, fans have asked to have this white one released instead to make their Hordak more like the vintage action figure. So if you get Spirit of Hordak, you can now have the option of displaying this white crossbow with your normal Hordak action figure. Alright guys, it's comparison time. Here's the Spirit of Hordak standing alongside normal Hordak. Same figure, just a different deco. Now it is kind of fun to play mix and match with the two figures though. You can create some of your own Hordak variants out of the parts if you'd like to.
So there you go, guys. There's a look at the Spirit of Hordak action figure. The fact that he's nothing more than a translucent red variation of the previous Hordak figure will definitely limit his appeal to some collectors. Honestly, this kind of reminds me of all those Star Wars figures that were redone in translucent blue plastic and made of spirits. But the fact that he includes a white crossbow is actually going to make the fans want him a little bit more, and the fact that he's so hard to buy right now, well, I think his demand is going to stay pretty high for a little while. I definitely don't think this figure is for everyone, though. Personally, I'm a sucker for translucent figures, and I do think it's fun to be able to recreate scenes of Hordak speaking to Keldor. But I'm really, really hoping that he gets a little easier to get a hold of as the year goes on, and everyone who really wants to get him will be able to. So stay tuned to MattyCollector.com. Good luck, and until next time.